A reading from Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You are, you that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Word of God, word of life. Those who seek the Lord like nothing that is good. Those who seek the Lord like nothing that is good. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord. For those who fear the Lord like nothing. The lions are in want and suffer. Who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life and desires long? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Those who seek the Lord like nothing that is good. A reading from Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because of the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, do I see any children out there today? I have one that's sleeping? No? Good morning, James. Are you coming up? No, he doesn't know. Not so much today. That's okay. I understand. It's early. Anybody else? One of these days, Jacob's going to be coming up here. <laughs> right? One of these days. All right, let's rise for the gospel. according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. 
Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we hear this promise tonight or today that you are the bread of life. You are the one who sustains us and nourishes us and strengthens us so that we might be able to do the work you've called us to do. We thank you for giving us this amazing bread. And we pray that today your word would indeed fill us and satisfy us and strengthen us to do those things you have called us to do. In Christ's name, amen. Dearly beloved of God, if you've been in worship the last month, you know that we have been reading the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, where Jesus pronounces himself as the bread of life. The bread of life, the food that we cannot be without. And all of John's sixth chapter, all 71 verses of this chapter, unpack what this means for us, this bread of life. So we've been chewing on this for a while now. Knowing that, I'm starting with a different tack today. We're going to look at the Proverbs reading first, where we hear of a woman named Wisdom who has opened a restaurant. Here again, these words, my paraphrase. Wisdom has built her house. She has slaughtered her animals and mixed her wine. She has set her table. She has sent out her servants to call abroad. Open for business. Wisdom's diner is now open for business. And now hear what she is serving. You that are simple, turn in here. You that are simple, and that word we might translate immature or naive. Come, says wisdom, come eat of my bread and drink of my wine. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. You can hear in this passage that wisdom is calling out to those in the marketplace who may be tempted to eat elsewhere. She is calling out to those who might be tempted to eat what we might call junk food, spiritually speaking. She is calling to us who might sometimes naively think that just because we are eating, we are being nourished. There's a term these days for locales in our country where there is a lack of nourishing food. They are called food deserts. Are you familiar with such a term? Food deserts. They are typically urban neighborhoods in our cities where there used to be a grocery store, but that store has left and nothing substantial has replaced it. Or it may be a small, abandoned, rural hamlet 
that used to have its own store but no longer does. And so now if anything has replaced it, it is a convenience store in this locale where they sell few things of, that have any nourishment but rather lots of candy and snacks and sugary drinks and things that simply don't nourish us. These places are called food deserts. And the people that live in these places are usually very unhealthy and ironically, often obese because the calories they consume do not nourish them. They satisfy them briefly and then they simply turn to fat. It's not that there is no food in these places, it's that there is no nourishing food. I bring this up because I believe that when it comes to wisdom, our country these days is in a food desert. When it comes to wisdom, our country is a food desert. It's not that no one is teaching or no one is speaking, it's rather that what is being taught is not nourishing. Think about it. On television, what are the most popular shows these days? Crime shows and reality TV. Now I ask you, is that nourishing or is that junk food? Think about the endless news stations that there are now on the television, offering many opinions and little wisdom. Is that nourishing or is that junk food? We have a plethora of teaching going on all around us, more than ever before with all the available media we now have. And yet we are like the urban neighborhood or the abandoned rural hamlet where there once was nourishing food, but now all we are left with is a convenience store that sells snacks and candy. And so wisdom calls out this divine woman calls out, come and eat of my bread and drink of my wine. Lay aside your naivete and your simplicity and your immaturity and walk in the way of insight. And if you know anything about real good food, you know that one of its characteristics is it takes time in every regard. It takes time. I was blessed to have a mom growing up who loved to cook. In fact, she still does love to cook. Every Sunday in our house, we always had roast beef or roast pork or roast chicken and gravy and mashed potatoes and vegetables and pie for dessert every Sunday. Now, did my mom whip that up in 30 minutes after church? I don't think so. Frankly, I don't know when she did it. I mean, there were six kids in the family. When did she do that? I have a hunch that she was scrubbing those vegetables and peeling those potatoes the evening before when we were long in bed. I know the roast was always in the oven when we went to church in the morning. It is, with, it is like that with wisdom. One does not gain wisdom by spending a few minutes a day on Facebook or reading a few tweets or Googling the latest trends. Wisdom is slow food. 
not fast food. It is slow food. It takes time to prepare. It takes time to eat. It takes time to digest. We need such wisdom these days. Oh, how badly we need it. I wonder what the effect would be on our world if we who are followers of this one who calls himself the bread of life would devote ourselves every day to some slow food, some wisdom. I wonder what the effect in our neighborhoods, in our church, in our community would be if every day we committed ourselves to a bit of time chewing on some wisdom, whether it be devotional writings of the ancient writers or some scripture or a substantial novel or a book that really truly provides some understanding. What effect would it have if we committed ourselves to a diet that nourished us and we quit spending our time and treasure on junk food, spiritually speaking. This is, of course, what Jesus is commending in the sixth chapter of John when he calls himself the bread of life. He is urging us to seek the food that truly nourishes us. For he knows that there are many options out there for that which we might choose to feed on. It was that way in his day. It is certainly that way in our day. I remember just a few weeks ago, I was up in St. Paul at Luther Seminary for a few days taking a class. And one afternoon, I decided I needed a little break, so I walked downtown St. Anthony Park, the village where the seminary is located, walked into a coffee shop, and lo and behold, it was a lot more than a coffee shop. In addition to a fine selection of teas and coffees, they also had shelves of books and products and food and supplements to enhance your spirituality or your healing. You could spend time in the back of this establishment in some rooms in meditation, mindfulness, take a yoga class, there were flyers up on the walls that advertised neighborhood spiritual teachers and gurus. Indeed, there were all sorts of offerings for spiritually hungry souls. There are a plethora of people calling out, come, drink of my wine and eat of that which I have prepared. And yet Jesus urges us to remember that some food nourishes us and some food does not. And so Jesus says, remember, I am the bread of life. I offer the bread that truly nourishes you. Come to me, all you who are hungry and I will give you bread. Martin Luther had a saying that at one time I laughed at. He's reported to have said, I have so much to do today that I need to spend the first several hours in prayer. I have so much to do today, I must first spend the first several hours in prayer. I used to laugh at that, thinking that it was absurd. But over the years, I have grasped the wisdom of that thinking. I believe that what Luther was saying was, before I can begin the exhausting work before me, I need to have a nourishing meal. 
And the food that I need takes time to digest. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the food that nourishes. Jesus is the source of life. And when we eat from his hand and partake of his word and sacrament, when we have a diet of this bread, then we gain life. Then we are nourished. It's as simple as that. Perhaps you didn't realize it when you came in here today, but this is a feeding station for hungry souls. And really good food is served here. And the good news is it is abundant. And it comes to you without cost from the gracious hand of God. So I invite you, come, be filled, be fed, be nourished, be strengthened for the work that God has called you to do. For Christ is good food indeed. Amen.